I am once again here to share with you information that absolutely nobody needs to hear and it's going to be convoluted and messy and deeply confusing. Neopets is seeing a massive resurgence right now after their change in ownership and also some batshit insane events that have put money back into the hands of the Neopian 99%. See my video on that here if you want to. I mean, you don't have to, but it would be really cute if you did. And that means a lot of players, new and old, are coming back into the game and wondering what is there to do other than feed my pet? Come here. There is a world of magic you have not yet uncovered. It's also sometimes horrifying and unyielding and fear-inducing, but you know, that's Neopets for you. Welcome to the Neopets trading video. Today, I am going to be taking you through every facet of Neopets trading that I possibly can. Fair warning, this video is going to be an information dump. There will be Google Docs of resources down below to help put what I say here into a more digestible format, and I'll try my best to clear the fog, but sit down, buckle up, and let's start from the very, very beginning. All right, when you first make a Neopets account, you are given the chance to make a pet, or if you already have have one, you can do the add Neopet thing right here as long as you have space. If you don't have space, you can buy space at the NC Mall or make a side account, which is where I am right now. Ignore all of the advertisements. I don't have premium on this side account because they won't let me. The fun thing with Neopets in particular is that no two pets can have the same name, meaning if somebody creates Candace, they own Candace forever and nobody can make another Candace again. They can make Candace 2, Candace with a Y, or something like that, but Candace cannot be made again except for very, very specific circumstances. So let's say I wanted to make Candace here, it's going to say name Candace is taken, right? So I cannot remake this pet that has already been made and a lot, and I mean a lot of pet names are taken. So you kind of have to get creative here. And this means because there are so little names that are available, the better named your Neopet is, the better chance you will have at being able to get them traded. I can't do Candace here. Let's try something else. So what constitutes a good name for trading? VWN, standing for very well named, is the type of name most people are looking for when they go to trade a Neopet. Very very well named means that the name is under eight letters long, begins with a capital letter, and has no other capital letters, no numbers, is pronounceable, and isn't a compound name. A compound name is two words smashed together like flutter bear or a bug bag. An example of a very well named pet is my friend Vi's skull. Very well named pets that kind of skirt a gray area are four L's and three L's, which is four letters and three letters that are not pronounceable. Most people consider these very well named as well, so if you have a four letter that's not really pronounceable, you might still be able to get them traded. Not as well, but it's something. We'll get more in depth on good names in the intermediate section of this video, but for now just keep all of that in mind. Well named, or WN, is very similar. These would be defined as pets over nine characters, pets that have no capital letters, otherwise they should fit the very well named standard, meaning no numbers, no underscores, whatever. An example of a well named pet is mine after Lively, who sits at 11 letters, otherwise they're really well named. DN, or decently named, is a compound name with or without capitalization, one or two underscores is not very many. You kind of want to keep that to a minimum if you can. Numbers are not really going to get you anything good, and pretty much anything under well-named is not really tradable in converted pets, and I will explain what converted means way later in this video. <laughs> BN or badly named is pretty much anything that falls in the worse than decently named category. Lots of numbers, random capitalization, keyboard smashes, etc. These won't really be useful for trading, especially in converted, so converteds right now is what we're making. We're making a converted pet. Go down to the Google Doc in the description. All of it will be written down. So your head hasn't exploded. <laughs> Let's talk about how to make or find your first trading pet. You're going to want to stay in that description of very well named to create a good trading pet, and there's a couple of great pet options that you can create completely for free. People tend to like Aisha's, Ixies, Usul's, Cows, Kachik's, Kugras, Boris, you will be able to get them traded if you have a good color and a good name on them, but those are my favorites personally and I see them get traded a lot. There are some that you would probably want to avoid, like the Buzz here. You don't really want to make one of these to trade. The Lenny, the Quiggle, just stay away from those. Akaras trade decently well as well, so just kind of like stay away from ones you don't see very often and you'll be good to go. Depending on the name, the species can be totally irrelevant and the base color you pick doesn't matter, so you can go red, green, yellow, or blue, it's not a big deal. Just pick whatever feels right to you because we're going to be either painting over them or it's not going to matter in general. So just pick a pet. I'm going to go with an Aisha here. So now that you've picked out who you'd like to make, let's talk about coming up with names. There are lots of untaken name lists that wonderful people have created that again will be in the resource link down below, but if you'd like to come up with a name yourself, try misspells of common words or names as these trade fairly well depending on how far off they are from the actual word, or just make a pronounceable word that sounds vaguely pleasant. That's all you really need. So let's say that you 
wanted a misspell of Madison or something. That's going to be pretty hard to find because a lot of people have made misspells of Madison, but you could add a Y instead of the I. You can add H's. It's going to be very like McCarty, Lakin kind of vibes, but they trade well, so you don't have to worry about sounding like a white mom. I promise you'll be fine. Let's go something like something like Lauren here is going to be a really good name. It's under a certain amount of letters. It's a misspell of a real name, and that's going to trade pretty well. I'm going to make this pet just for the vibes, but some currently untaken names that will probably be taken in a little while are Lysetia, Serena, Alexa, Nixia, or Viana. So those are some names to start you off and some examples to use. Again, it's going to sound very odd and off-putting and white mommy, but you're going to have to go with it, okay? You're just going to have to go with it. You're going to have to get used to this because this is what you're going to see. So I made Laura in here. Let's make her a female. Why not? And all of this stuff here just doesn't matter. I tend to do whatever with these. People don't care about this shit, okay? Just leave it alone. And if you go through those untaken name lists, you're going to want to let the people who made them know via Neo Mail or something because they can take them off the list then and I will be putting more untaken names in the Google Doc. If you can't figure out if what you have is a good name or not, just go back to those very well named descriptions and try and figure it out. I promise you'll do good. So we have Lauren now, which is fantastic. It's great. It's beautiful. Look at all of that. She looks gorgeous. She looks stunning. And she's ready to be traded. She is ready for new people to meet her. But if we're going to want to get more bites on this girl, this lovely little lady right here, she looks like she could be on ANTM, you are going to want to either leave your pet unpainted or you can paint it a cheap color. A lot of people will just trade for good names. They don't have to be painted, but painting them really helps you. So I would recommend doing that. I'd highly recommend watching the Amanda files. Hi, I love you so much. Full guide to Neopets for more information on how to earn Neo points. But in short, log in every day, do your quest, do Trudy Surprise, and do the Fairyland Employment Center. Once you have about 600k, that's when we can really start cooking. This is my side account, so I don't have any money on here, but we're gonna log on to my other account and I will be able to show you how we actually do this, okay? <laughs> okay, now I am on the correct account. Let's talk about paintbrushes. So if you go over here to Jelly Neo, the item database, you can search in paintbrushes and see the prices for them. It's two separate words, so you're going to want to type that in and just look at them. If you have saved up Neo points for a while, you're going to want to go with more expensive, but I'm going to show you some of the paintbrushes you can get that are really cheap that you don't really have to spend a lot of time saving up for that will still get you a leg up when you're trading. The baby paintbrush right here is a classic. Anybody can buy it from the Hidden Tower, which there's a link in the Jelly Neos dailies to go there. You can only buy one per day, but that's okay. Baby Aisha specifically will trade really well with these. I think that that's like a perfect introduction to the trade I'm going to show you how to make later so you can make a baby Aisha but a lot of those will be around so if you want to stand out from the crowd a little bit we could go to the Tyranian paintbrush which is somewhere here. Tyranian paintbrush boom you're going to want to buy these from the shop wizard just go over here if you have the premium shop wizard I'm not sure if you can buy it there but whatever it's fine 600 great fantastic so you could buy one of these or you could buy a Tyranian morphing potion if you want to this will give you something a little bit different than the baby paintbrush but it's still going to be fairly cheap if you you want a different type of leg up, you could purchase a Pirate Drake Morphing Potion, which is about 260000 Now, Pirate is not a very good color. It's not going to get you extra trades or anything. It's not fantastic, but the species is different. So Drakes cannot be made in the Create a Pet area. You have to either grow a Drake egg or you have to morph a pet into a Drake, which is what we would do with this Morphing Potion. So Pirate Drake Morphing Potion, fantastic. We're looking at 300 k Sometimes the prices on Jelly Neo just kind of like fluctuate a little bit. It'll be the truth. Sometimes it won't be the truth, but you can buy one of these and then you don't have to paint over that. You can just do a pirate drake for now because the trades I'm going to show you how to do are super simple, super easy, really nice. Okay, great. Fantastic. Let's just for like shits and gigs buy one of these guys and I'm going to send that over to my side account and I will show you how to make your first trade with it after I show you some other stuff. So there is a downside to making a pet new. A lot of people like aged pets, which means that they are a couple years old maybe a couple hundred days old, something like that. And when you make a brand new pet, you actually cannot pound them for seven days, meaning you can't put them in the pound. Meaning you can't put them in the pound, but a lot of people will want pets that are older, not everybody, and you certainly don't have to do this. So there is another option and you do have the possibility to get really lucky with this one and it is pound surfing. The Neopets pound is incredibly broken, but it is absolutely possible to find well-named painted pets floating around in there if you have a few hours to spare. You're gonna have to be really quick in 
in choosing to adopt them, follow the guidelines for good names, and refresh the page over and over. If you're on Mac, you can use the command and then R to refresh, which makes it a lot easier. Look through each name. It'll show up with errors a couple times, but just keep going. So like these names are nothing to write home about. There's underscores. This one has a capital, but it has underscores and letters. It's long. You're not going to want to adopt any of these guys. I know it's sad. I know it's so sad and you feel so bad, but they are not good for trading. Also, Christmas paints are really easy to get. Cloud paints are really easy to get, so you're not really going to want to look at those either. Coco Puffly is actually really cute and she's a fun color, but not really what we're looking for. Damn, I kind of want to adopt her. She's not going to trade well, but she's cute. Little Chicago, that's adorable. But you're going to see a lot of the same pets over and over again. Just keep going through it. I promise you will eventually find something. It might take you hours. You might not even find anything worth it the first day of doing it. What you're mostly going to want to look for, even if they aren't painted, is good names. So if you see a pet with a very good name that's not painted, don't worry about taking them. You can paint them later or you can just keep them the way that they are. So this pet is not a good species, but this is an example of like an okay name. I would say this is more on the well-named side since it could be considered not great, but it's a good length and that's the kind of capitalization you'd be looking for. You'd want to change the species, but it's something. It's not the best thing that you could get. It's something and I've been searching for like half an hour. So, you know, that's kind of where we would be looking for. Just keep reloading. Let's say that you adopted a pet much better than Tim Ladu, okay? So we're gonna go back to the pet that I just made so that I don't have to keep doing this, okay? surfing can really pay off. You're also going to want to look for those drakes in here. If you find a hissy or a croc, you really went out. Yeah, that's pound surfing. Let's show you how to actually trade a pet. Are you excited? I'm not. So we're back here with little Lauren. I sent myself that pirate drake morphing potion. You can do that or you can go with some of the colors that I had mentioned. Either way, that's totally fine and I'm going to morph it, use on Lauren. There we go. Fantastic great. And as you can see, Lauren has become a lovely drake and she's wearing a bunch of clothes. We're going to keep those on her. And we're going to go over to the Neo boards. Now the Neo boards is where you're going to do all of your trading no matter what type you're doing. You're going to scroll down to pet trading right here and there's going to be a ton of boards. There's currently a pet auction house going on, people trading a bunch of different wonderful lovely pets. But for your first ever trade, and please I am begging you don't jump into anything else before you do this, you're going to want to go and find the wonder trade board now these are pretty much going to be always going on you're going to be able to find them at any time of the day they are a staple if you've ever played pokemon you've probably done a wonder trade before meaning you don't know what you're going to get so this will say well named and painted wonder trade that's pretty much the only ones people ever do this wonder trade is well named and painted you can list any pet of any color with any name you then accept the first well named painted pet that you receive as a trade offer if this isn't on the first page of the neo boards you're going to have to go to the second one but there will pretty much always be one going a lot of the same people run them you can recognize them they will just always be titled this and then here you're gonna see the full guidelines of wonder trade you're gonna want to read through all of these I will give you a rundown of everything as best I can but please go through and read the rules first I don't want you guys to get into a tussle and then there's gonna be a listing format right here so I will show you how to do that okay fantastic great I'm doing this right now while there's an auction house going on so it's gonna be a little bit slower but you're going to want to go to the last page and whatever pet you want to list you are going to go ahead and write out listing and then your pet's name so i have lauren and then you're going to do a dash and then whatever species and color it is so pirate drake and lauren has all of her clothes some clothes come with paint brushes so if you do like a desert paint they'll come with desert clothes if you get pets from the pound they won't have these clothes but if you make them they should have the clothes so lauren has her clothes Clothes. I'm gonna go ahead and put in clothed and then since Lauren is also a very young pet meaning she can't go to the pound I'm going to type in young just so people know and they don't feel cheated when they send for her or something And what you're gonna do is make sure that this pet is right here in your little active box You see what I mean? So it says active pet Lauren if they are not in your active box You're gonna click here and you're gonna click on whatever pet you want to wonder trade and then click the star And it will change from inactive to active and that's how you know that you have your active pet they're going to be up here. It'll be very easy, very fun. And then down here, you're going to type until no longer active or UNLA. 
right? Once somebody sends a pet for your pet, it will no longer appear in the active box. You don't have to take them off as you're active manually. So until that pet goes, you are going to have that pet listed up here and anybody can trade you for it, okay? If you have to take them off for some reason, if you have to leave the house, make sure and switch to another active pet and say that you are taking your listing down, okay? That way people won't send anything if you're not able to accept it. You're going to put your username, whatever username this pet is on. So the username that I'm using right now is Sharpest Lives, and that way people will be able to copy and paste that to send for the pet that you are listing. Mine is going to be a misspelling of a real name because Lauren's a real name and this is a misspelling of a real name. So I'm going to put in parentheses RN for real name and then MS for misspell, right? So that's all the information that everybody needs to see about this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click submit. Super easy, now my pet is up here, ready to be sent for. This is a new side, so it looks like shit. We're just gonna wait for somebody to send for a pet, right? Again, it might take a while, but if you go through a page or so, if it gets to another page on this board, you can relist, just put relisting and then copy and paste your listing, right? So why this is so helpful is it gives you an easy way to get better pets with the pets that you have because people have to send you a well-named painted pet. There are rules for that. You can list anything you want. You could even list a badly named unpainted pet. I don't think it would get any bites, but you could. You just can't send whatever you want. And I will show you how to send in a little bit. It's super easy. It's super simple, but you can list whatever you want. So it's very easy to quickly trade up. So somebody could send me a worse pet for this, as long as it still fell under the well-named painted category. Or somebody could send me an insanely good pet. And we'll talk more about what good and bad is later. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. You can see that Lauren has disappeared from my active box. That means we got a trade and there's a notification right here. So you're gonna click that. And they sent Dramadea the Disco Ixie. We'll grab that and let's see. So got a good amount of Battle Dome stats, which we'll talk about later too. So yeah, not bad, not a bad trade. Dramadea is kind of a cute name, I like it. But what we're gonna do here is I don't really wanna keep this pet personally. I'm not gonna trade it in a pet auction house. I'm not gonna do any of that. So what you can do is you can come back over over here and basically relist that pet. You cannot send this pet anywhere. You can't send it for another pet, but what you can do is you can relist it for somebody else to send for. The following day, you will be able to send this to anybody you want, so you can wait a day and then send it to other people, but on the first day, you can only transfer that pet to somebody else once and somebody else already transferred it to you. So basically, if you listed and somebody could trade Kate for them, no problem. You can continue the chain for as long as you'd like, but if you wanted to trade Anne for Anne, you can do that. So I usually like to say something nice about the pet that somebody sent me just to show that I'm grateful and stuff and then I do listing their name just like we did before whatever information you want and then submit again and people will be able to send for that pet which is really cool and you can continue the chain for as long as you'd like until you find something that you want to keep or you want to keep to trade so it's super easy it's super simple and it's a really great introduction into trading for the first time and this person says that well-named basics are fine which means that you can do a pet that is not painted as long as they're over the time requirements I will show you all of that in a minute but there will be some people that let you do that so if you find a well-named basic in the pound that's a couple weeks old you can go ahead and send that basic for them but that is not the common rule you're normally gonna have to send a well-named painted pet so if you want to send for a pet it's gonna be a little bit different you're gonna find one that you like and you're gonna make sure that you have a pet that you can send so the rules for this is this pet must be over a week old it must be well-named so so fitting all of that, it must be painted. And there are a list of rejectable colors that we will go over really quickly, but you're gonna wanna look through those on your own because you don't wanna send a pet that's rejectable. This will always be at the top of the Wonder Trade page. So you can go down here and then the rejectable colors and species right here, and it will show you. So all species in the four basic colors may be rejected. All pets under a week of age may be rejected. Grundos in these colors may be rejected since they can be created at the space station. And then all of these morphs are really really cheap so it could be like you're cheating somebody basically out of a good pet so you're gonna want to make sure that you don't send any of these right look through them check that your pet isn't that and then check that they fit the well-named mark you can go ahead and pretty much send your pet to anybody you'd like as long as they listed it and the pet is still there so i'm going to show you how to send just out of kindness for the other person by the way if you feel like a pet is just specifically awful horrible please do not send them that pet please just be nice okay oh somebody's up here saying thanks for lauren that's super nice that's super sweet it's always really nice to just go ahead and say like hey thank you i had 
to go back and repost this because I literally forgot that I was on my side account, but whatever. Here's an example that people make mistakes anyway. So to send, you're going to want to copy this username right here. If I want Trakai, you're going to go on over to the explore page. Neopia Central right here, Neopian Plaza, and go to the pound. So then you're going to click transfer, and this is where it gets a little bit annoying because you're going to have to do some maneuvering. I am going to take whoever I have. I'm going to transfer Vericity because why not? I don't know. That would be fun. And then we're going to put the username in. It's going to cost you a thousand Neo points to do this, and it's also going to cost you a little bit of money to adopt. It's also going to cost the other person a little bit of Neo points to adopt the pet that you send, so make sure you have a couple Neo points in your account at the very least. So I'm going to go exchange Neopets Trekai. And then you're basically just going to wait until they accept it. As long as you follow the rules and stuff, they should accept pretty quickly. If you get trade locked, which means that they haven't accepted it, you can go ahead and give them a Neo mail or just, you know, wait it out. So we're going to wait until they accept it. It shouldn't be very long. See, got them right there. Fantastic. Now I own Trakai. I have a new pet right here. So sometimes you get good pets, sometimes you get bad pets. Please ignore that some of my pets are suffering. It's fine. But that is how you do a wonder trade. And like I said, make sure you read through everything before you do that. Make sure that you follow the rules and make sure you're courteous. Be kind to people. If you have any questions, they are usually more than happy to help you out. Just ask how you're feeling. Ask if a pet is okay to send. And you can always do those well-named basic trades if somebody's looking for a pet to zap, which I will talk about again later. It's all kind of crazy, but you're going to want to do this a couple times. Keep making pets, keep listing them, keep finding them in the pound, and eventually you're going to have a good army of fodder. If you need more space for fodder, you can make up to five side accounts, but there are a lot of rules for side accounts, so look them up, or you can purchase for real life money more slots. That will give you more pets. See this person says thank you for the trade, and then listed the pet that I sent them, and that's totally normal. Don't be offended, don't be sad, and don't be offended offended, don't guilt people if they give you a pet that's not great. You can reject pets that are on the rejectable pet list, but otherwise, you're shit out of luck, so you will always be able to trade that pet again. It's not terrible. It's cool. It's fine. You're gonna be okay. What do you want to look for in Wonder Trade? What do you want to look for to trade for? What do you want to look for to keep? Let's go over it. <laughs> also, I forgot to mention real quick that when you go to this transfer screen, it's gonna say we can't allow you to send or receive more than one Neopet per month. That's not true. That's not true. Okay, that is old information. You can do as many as you want per day, just not on the same pet, right? Okay, cool. We got that out of the way. How do I know what to get? How do I know what to look for? In terms of good pets, you're going to want to keep those naming conventions in mind. If you see a particularly good misspell or a real word or something, you're going to want to go for that. But other than that, just look for good names. Look for good short names that are pronounceable, and I won't repeat them. But some colors you may want to keep are most paintbrushes, over 3 million. You can find prices on Jelly Neo, but some highlights are gray, valentine's, plushy, mutant, Moroccan, and more. Prices are fluctuating like crazy right now, but toy and pastel are always loved too, even though they're lower because of the whole daily quest thing. Some cheaper colors will also trade really well. If you have a feeling that you should keep them, keep them. Just do it, you know, keep them. You aren't going to waste any time by keeping them. See if they trade, see if they don't. You can see all of the pet colors on all the different species on neocolors.me.uk and all of the paintbrush prices by searching paintbrush on the Jelly Neo item database. If you see a lab exclusive color like burlap, robot, chocolate, and sponge, absolutely go for it. These are not able to be made by paintbrushes, so they're more sought after. Lab exclusives like custard and stuff are kind of, eh, I wouldn't, but every color is somebody's jam, so the lab is something that you can get once you have about 2 million Neo points. It might be inflated right now, but you have to purchase these secret lab map pieces. And when you zap pets, they have a possibility of changing color. So people will do that. And that's why people want well-named basics sometimes to zap them because the color will be changed. So it doesn't really matter. Other than colors, you're going to want to look for aged pets. These are pets that were made a long time ago, like 20 years ago, a long time ago. They're kind of hard to come by, but if you find them, 100% keep pets made in year two or three. These are going to be really valuable. But a good example of an aged pet is is Takwi right here. So you're going to go to details to check this out. So they were made in year seven, which is 6,556 days ago. That's a pretty old pet. This pet also has a couple stats on her. So she's kind of cool. She's kind of neat. I got her in Wonder Trade. Her color is shitty, but that's okay. Aged pets are really cool to look out for. And even if they're not made in year two or whatever, it's still cool and it's a good facet to give people. You'll be able to tell people that they're aged and that helps. You can also look for pets with battle dome stats, which is what I was saying when I said these pets have 
good stats. You'll be able to see all of those stats in the details section like I showed the age. These make pets able to win a battledom fight and they're sought after for many different reasons. So if your pet has high strength, level, defense, and attack, keep them. You can even train them up further at the training academies. The better the stats and the more even the numbers are on the stats, the higher the value. The main thing that overrides all of this though is the pet's name. If you get traded a pet that has a real word or real name, it doesn't matter what color they have. If the name is short, really pronounceable, and pretty, same thing goes. Just kind of use your judgment. This is all super subjective, so I can't really nail down values for you, unfortunately. I wish I could, but that's kind of like the runaround for it. Look for good names. Good colors are really helpful. A great real word would be something like convince or realize, but something like triskaidekaphobia probably wouldn't be the best. You want more common real words if you can, but those are really hard to come by, so don't worry about that, especially for starting out. Sometimes people will do IL swaps, which is a capital I instead of an L because it looks like an L. These aren't as sought after, but you can still do them and a lot of people like to collect them, so it's kind of up to you. Before you know it, you're going to have a lot of well-known pets at your disposal. Let's move to the more intermediate section, which is pet auction houses and making your own boards. I'm going to go back to my other account now. Woohoo. Paws, PAHs, or pet auction houses are where lots of users come together to list the pets that they have up for trade and allow others to bid on them. One person who's called the host creates a bidding board, which will run until a certain amount of time or amount of listings. After people have listed, a bidding board will go up. This is where everyone will offer on pets in a 30 minute-ish time period. Once this ends, the listers make their decisions and trades begin. So first, let's go over the different types of pet auction houses, blah blah blah, resource link down below for everything I've said here to be digestible, blah blah blah. The most common type of paw is an H&H, &H, which means half and half. You can list two pets and if one of those pets gets a valid bid, they may trade or they may pass, meaning accept no offers. So if somebody passes on a pet, that means they are not accepting any offers for them. If both of the pets get valid bids, they must choose at least one of the pets to trade, or they can trade both. If only one pet is listed, their listing becomes a no pass, meaning they must trade that pet for a valid bid. A valid bid is considered a well-named pet that is painted in most pet auction houses, but read through the host's personal rules on their page. Invalid bids can still be accepted, so a basic or something can still be accepted, but they don't force a trade. So if somebody has valid bids on one pet and an invalid bid in another, that doesn't mean that they have to trade any of their pets because one of the bids is invalid. A spicy H&H &H is very similar. God, I hate these names, but it's fine. It's whatever. It's like an H&H, &H, except if only one pet gets valid bids, they still must trade. The same rules apply for the H&H &H if both pets get bids. One pet is still a no pass. A no pass simply means the same thing as the one pet no pass listing. If the pets listed get any valid bids, they must pick one and trade. A frenzy paw means that all listers have a free pass, meaning no trades have to be made no matter the bids received, and you can bid on other people's bids. So if somebody bids Lacey on one of the paw pets, you can also bid on Lacey. You cannot do this in any other paw. And also, it just kind of, it's terrifying. I would not recommend stepping into one of these until you're very, very well versed with paws because it's awful. There are plenty of other variations that are much, much rarer that I'm not going to go over right now, but they do exist, so don't be surprised if one pops up. The host will share the rules to that specific variation if they choose to do it, so don't worry about that. So now that we know all of that, let's go over how to list and how to bid. These pop up multiple times a day, but there's not always one going, so you're going to have to wait for somebody to start a listing. This pet auction house right here just ended. See, it's 1.32, and everything is in Neopian standard time, by the way, so keep that in mind. This one ended a while ago, so I'm going to have to wait for another one to come up. If there isn't one, you can always make a paw interest board, which will just gauge interest. You would go to the create new topic and then make the title like paw interest board or something. If you see something that says a shuffle, like somebody is asking for shuffle interest right now, that's not what we're talking about. It's something completely different. You're going to have to look for PAH, okay? PAH. Don't go into the shuffles. So you're going to find one of these boards once they go up. It could be at any time during the day. You can turn on notifications in the Neopets subreddit discord server, but it's going to say something like spicy H&H &H paw listing, and then it might say in the top how long it's going to go for, or it might say in the body. And then you're going to want to read through all of these rules and make sure that you know everything because you don't want to mess up. And you can see all of these people right here listing in this certain format. So that'll be whatever format the host wants, but the most common one is going to be this one. So as you can see right here, since this is a half and half, I've listed out 
two different pets that I am willing to trade, which are Yezd the Fairy Drake, which is a four letter, and Vilira the Magma Sai Bunny. So these two pets are ones that I want to get rid of, I would like to see some offers for, and they don't have to be fantastic pets, but sometimes if there are really, really good pets in the pot, which again, I'll talk about later, I keep saying it, but I'll talk about it later, you will probably want to bid rather than list, but you can do both. So you're going to do listing and then a space down and then your pet's name their color, and their species. And then another one down, make sure you do this dash instead of the, because most people prefer that. And then either put no pass if you're going to be doing a no pass, AKA listing only one pet, or add another pet down here. Sometimes you're allowed to list more than one pair, that's okay too, just make sure it's cool with the host. And then your username. And what the person who is running the paw is gonna do is copy and paste all of this information way up here into this thing called the pot, which is a link to a pet page. And you can customize Neopets pet pages to do pretty much anything you want. It will show something like this. So this is normal h, &H pet auction house. It'll tell you who the host is. It'll warn you that there are no items or Neo points being exchanged and then all of the rules will be right here so you're gonna want to read through these make sure that everything you listed is okay right here this the two to three character pets this means that it's two or three characters instead of letters which means that there could be numbers or underscores or whatever here so that's what that means and then the one-to-one -one ratio means that you must bid at least one pet for every pet that you're offering on so if you're offering on two pets you must bid two pets you can do more than that but you can't do less than that so it could be two to three, two to four, just make sure that you have enough pets to cover both of the pets that you're bidding on, right? Okay, makes sense? Cool. And then in the pot, you're gonna see all of the pets that are gonna be up for trade. There will be a picture of them, there will be the name, and then the username of whoever is listing them. This is really helpful so that you know who's gonna be posting the acceptances, all of that. Any information that you want will also be right here. It's gonna be similar to the wonder trade, and when you're listing, you can also add that information in, like age, battle dome stats, whatever. And once once all of the listing has finished, these will be updated. So this is an old pot and it will probably be an old pot until listing is over. This one specifically is until the end of page two and you can list up to four pets, so two pairs or one is a no pass, great. So when page two is completely filled up or sometimes before that, if there are a lot of listings, the host will let you know that the pot is closed. Please do not post after the pot has closed because it's just not cool. It's not fun for the host, don't do that. And make sure you double, triple check your names before you post, you'll have a bit of a period to correct them if something's wrong. Just like make sure that you double check. Nobody's going to be mad at you if you mess it up and you'll be able to correct it, but just, you know, be nice. <laughs> Look through what you got here. A lot of these half and half ones will fill up very fast, so make sure and get your listing in towards the beginning if you can. It won't disqualify you from getting any bids, but the lower down your pet is in the pot, the less likely people are to see it, so getting in at the beginning is probably the best. But again, you need to take time to look through the rules, make sure you're doing everything correctly. So that's what you're going to do for listings. As you can see, some people will add like RW at the end of their listings and that kind of thing. And then can't init means can't initiate. They got that pet today, so they can't send it. They would have to have somebody else who can initiate, which can be a problem if both parties can initiate. So if you see a pet and somebody bids a pet that can't initiate on your pet that can't initiate, you guys are going to have to wait till the next day or not do the trade. So we're just going to wait for this listing to fill up and then I will show you the next part of the process. Okay, so the lovely host has just posted that their listings are up and you go to check yours. You're gonna scroll down and find the pets that you listed. I'm all the way down here. <laughs> And you're gonna check the name so the names are perfect the pictures line up with what i actually have and make sure that your username is correct everything's correct so that's awesome you're gonna go back over and say hey everything's correct thank you for hosting always say thank you <laughs> if there is anything wrong you're just gonna politely let the host know that it doesn't look correct do not be a bitch about it please i'm begging you it will be solved you'll be fine just say like hey this isn't working correctly can you please fix it thank you be nice you can also include in your listing if the pet has a fun pet pet, like a lab exclusive one or something. You can see all of the information on that on Jelly Neo. You can also just add a little fun fact about their birthday, if it was on a holiday or something like that. You can add pretty much anything you want if you think it's going to help your chances. But you know, keep it to a normal standard. Don't add the randomest information like you found them on a lucky day or something, you know what I mean? Be normal about it. Don't post anything with your listing like, please, please, please bid on my pets, that will be seen as begging. Don't do that. It's not cool. 
wouldn't appreciate it as a host, wouldn't appreciate it as a bidder, don't do that. I did exactly what you're not supposed to do and I went away from my computer to cook some pasta, so now I'm slightly late, but you're basically gonna wanna click on the bidding board up here, which is going to be started by the host. It'll say spicy pet auction house bidding or whatever type of paw you're going into, and then it'll usually either say up here or in the body how long the bidding is. And the host preferred format of bidding is going to be right here, but I will show you how to type it out and how to do it. So if you're listing, you're just going to wait here and see what happens, see what kind of bids you get, people will start bidding on your pets. But if you want to bid, you're gonna click on that pot page right here, look through and see who you might wanna bid on. There's some cool pets. This HSD means health, strength, defense, and this is going to show you battle dome stats. So these are very rare to be listed, but if they have something like 300 HSD or higher, that's really good. The 250 is also great. And then there's the RW for real word. So we have some fun names. Look for fun names, look for expensive colors, look for lab exclusive colors, but also try and stay in the realm of something that's like a very, very slight step up from what you have or something similar in value that will trade better because you don't want to under offer. You don't want to offer somebody your shitty pets. It'll happen. So for this video, I'm going to go ahead and find somebody who I would like to offer on. I really would love Tristan, but I don't think I have any fodder worth him right now, so I'm not going to bid. I'm going to try and offer on Ficchio. I like that. That's cool. I'm going to offer on Ficchio. So what I would do here to do that is do B and then copy paste the name of whatever pet or pets I wanna bid on, and then O, and then get a list of your pets ready. You're gonna to wanna to copy and paste it. So I'm gonna offer my Tyranian Croc with a similar name. Crocs are a really good pet to offer. Crocs are also one of those rare pets that you can't just make. I'm also going to offer Surcharged, my Candy Kachik. That's bothering me a little bit, that should be capitalized anyway. And then I'm also going to offer Surgical, my Gray Aisha, and Ekum, my Plushy Norbu. So what everybody offers and how they value things is kind of subjective. I feel like you should look at the bids that other people are giving and kind of go off of those, but you can bid whatever you'd like. Honestly, if you think your pet is worth their pet, give it a shot. See what you get. And then you're going to add your username as well as always. And then thank the host. Easy as pie. Like I said, make sure that you have that little one-to-one -one ratio going. You're going to need it. I honestly don't know how well Yezd and Valera are going to do because this is a really stacked pot, so I might not even have any bids to show you guys. The more stacked up the pot is, aka the better the pets are, the less bids the semi-okay pets are gonna get. <laughs> but it kind of depends. The audience is really different for every single pet auction house, so you'll just have to see what you get. But otherwise, you can just kind of chill. I'm gonna go eat my pasta while I wait for the bids to come in. So I added on the bidding page that I was also looking for well-named basics to zap because I have the lab ray and I just zapped one of my basics into a good color, so I need more. So this lovely person offered on Valera, technically invalid bids, but I really want them and I'm totally cool with them, so we have yes. Yazare, Rumare, Enare. I love all of those. Those are actually really pretty names. There's also an issue right now with like post jumping, which basically means that posts are just like completely moving around. I don't know what to do about that, but you know, that's fine. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, fantastic. But you'll see a pattern of certain pets getting a lot of bids. So like Zoggin, the burlap cow. Burlap cows are super, super popular. They are super sought after. And that four letter name that's mostly pronounceable is going to be super popular as well. So those kinds of pets are going to dominate the pot, right? Most pets will get at least some sort of bids, or if it's a really competitive pot, they might not get any. And don't be discouraged if your pets don't get a bid in a paw. That probably doesn't mean that your pets are bad or anything. It just means that that was a really busy pot and you're going to want to try again later. Because sometimes I've had pets that have zero interest get traded for a really good pet in the next paw. You know what I mean? So don't let yourself get discouraged by that. And sometimes people will offer customs, which basically means that the lister can choose a paintbrush up to the amount given. If it's unlimited, that means any paintbrush. So this bid right here would be any paintbrush under 5 million on this pet right here. So this Christmas Norbu could become anything under 5 million. You know what I mean? So if people offer that, you can ask for pretty much any paintbrush, right? You can also ask for morphing potions, I believe, but some people may not be willing to do a morph. We got another bid for Valera. And if you start getting bids that you really like, but you can't decide, you're going to want to make a short list, which is a list of all of the bids that you think are cool, that you think would be a great trade. And 
and you're gonna keep that in your notes app or whatever so you can get ready to accept somebody. I know it seems like a lot, but I swear it's actually really easy to get into the hang of it and you'll see a lot of pause go on and that's the most important thing. Just watch them until you get comfortable because it does take some time and once you see one actually in action, you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable. I'm trying my best to showcase that here, but it is a little bit hard to do so because when you're in it, it feels a lot different. Some people will also list or offer an FFQ, which means Fountain Fairy Quest. And with Fountain Fairy Quest, you can choose whatever paintbrush color you want that isn't a lab exclusive and also not Yusuke Girl and Yusuke Boy and 8-Bit for some reason, I don't know why, but those are really sought after. So you might get a pet with a bid for an FFQ. You can either pick an untaken name for that to be used on or a name that they offer. It'll depend from person to person what they're willing to do. But if you're unsure, just go ahead and ask. I didn't think that Valera was gonna be the one that got the bids, but you know, that's kind of the oddness of pet auction houses. So if you listed and only if you listed, you may bid your pets on other pets in the pot if they haven't received any bids in the last five minutes that is so if you do that you're going to go back to the pot find somebody you'd like to bid on and then type at the top of your bid five min bid okay these bids do not force anybody to trade so don't expect that it will be completely up to the lister if they want to trade or not do not beg in any bids do not beg for the pet that's not nice don't do it people will not be fond of that so just keep the begging to a complete minimum and by that i mean none of it stop it what are you doing stop it make sure that you double triple check that your pet has not gotten any bids before you five minute bid it on another pet. It is 441 Neopian Standard Time, and that means that bidding is closed. So the host just posted that. Bidding is now closed. Any posts above this are valid due to time jumping and post jumping. So I have a pet I want to accept. Here's how I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna start with the thanks for the bids because that's nice and that's what you should do. And then I'm gonna copy paste the pet that I'm accepting. I'm accepting Rina just because I like her name and I have a fountain fairy quest that I could do for her so I feel like I could make her into something really neat and I like that name a lot I really do and then you're gonna clearly state which pet you're accepting that for so Valera cool fantastic I'm not gonna trade Yezd since I traded Valera so I'm gonna say passing on yes and then I'm going to let the person who bid know that Valera is on this account so at Salem Ophelia and that way they can initiate if they'd like to or I can basically you're just going to wait for an initiation like you do wonder trade but normally people will acknowledge this and let you know that they've seen your acceptance before they do it. What do people do if their bid gets accepted multiple times? So the person who bid that pet actually gets to choose which pet that they want to trade for. So if they bid on three pets, they can choose between any of those three pets that accepted them and trade for that one. It's completely up to the bidder. And I am going to wait around for the acceptance on the pet that I bid on. The actual transit process you will have done many times with Wonder Trades, so don't worry about that. It's just about sending. If somebody wants you to send, you do the transit transfer. If they want to send, they do the transfer. If you're trading a Lutari, which is another limited species, you're going to have to have the person who owns the Lutari transfer them no matter what side of the trade they're on. So the lovely person who bid Runa on Valera said that they saw the acceptance and is going to send them. Perfect. Fantastic. And this is an example of a short list, which I am on, which is really neat. So this is all of the pets that the person is currently considering for Ficchio, which is who I bid on, and Surgical is my pet. So if you see a short list, look for your pet on this funny little list and they will usually be shortened to SL or you can post shout outs which are pets you liked but didn't accept which is usually shortened to S slash O. If you're on a short list you're going to want to say thank you and I just got the trade request for Valera so I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Fantastic. See how easy it is? Super easy for the actual trading portion. I'm going to go back to the board and that pet will become your active and once you accept it you can say thank you because that's nice. So I'm saying thank you for the trade and thank you Angie for the SL. I did not get picked as you can see right here, but it's still really nice to have that acknowledgement and you should always say thank you because that's nice. If you are looking through bids and you are trying to figure out who you want to take, I would recommend just going with your gut and what you feel is the best pet because you're going to want to retrade those or if you see a name that you really like or a name color combination that you really like and want to keep, do that because that's what the trading thing is all for. You're going to want to find pets that you want to keep, which are called permies and that's the whole goal. You want to find pets that you love enough to keep that is why you trade but it's also just a good rush of energy and you enjoy it in the google document down below i did make a list of very popular colors and very popular species so if you're trying to sort through your bids for the first time check that out the google doc is really probably going to be more helpful than the video at large but you know it's cool it's fine a premium perk custom is very similar to an ffq by the way if you happen to get one of those bid on your pets i kind of doubt you will at first but a premium user will get one species change per year and if you change the species of a 
pet that's painted a certain color and the species you want to change that pet into cannot be painted that color, you get to choose any color, even lab exclusives, even Yusuke girls if you want to. So that's really sought after, you only get one per year. Those can trade really highly and even get you into a UC if you have one, so keep that in mind if you plan on getting a premium subscription because you can trade those really highly. They're very similar to an FFQ, they have to be on a name that this person has or an untaken name. You cannot get an FFQ or a premium perk on any of your pets, that is against the rules. The most important thing here is trade for your pleasure, trade for what you want, and just have fun with it. There will be a huge learning curve, it takes a lot of time, but it's really fun and I am by no means the expert on trading. I make a lot of bad trades constantly and I don't know that much, okay? This is just my experience and the basics of trading mechanically, so what you're going to want to do mechanically, but I am not the expert here. A lot of my friends are very helpful and help me make decisions on trades, so you might want to do that if you have people who have traded before. And the only thing left to talk about in this section is making your own personal trading board. So if you don't feel like taking part in a pet auction house, what you're going to basically want to do is go to create new topic and put in the topic title any pets that you have for trade that are super interesting, like say pastel Cy bunny UFT, and that means up for trade, whatever you want. Whatever you have that's cool, it doesn't have to be any of that, but just put that in your title and add some emoticons, do some fun shit with it, I don't know, make it interesting to click on, and then you're basically going to post your up for trade list in the body, what you're looking for, it can be pretty much anything, type of names, any vibes, any colors, and then ask for people to mail, which means neo mail, you'll get notifications for that, or just post and run, which means you will neo mail them later if you like their offer. You're not obligated here to accept like anything, so don't worry about that. So let's say I wanted to trade my real word sponge bloomeroo, I'm gonna put RW sponge bloomeroo up for trade plus others and then a moon emoji and then I'm just going to copy and paste all of my pets that I have up for trade into this body and say what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for anything in particular here so I'm just going to pretend that this says something like robot pets or whatever, okay? And then you're going to create the topic and then once it's made you're going to bump it maybe every five, six, seven minutes. So that just means leaving something in a comment to get it to the top of the boards again. And that's really simple. It's just really chill. It's laid back. People will make offers. Just say yes or no. You don't have to feel bad about it. The other thing I would like to very quickly touch on is PPAs, which is something like this. So hour and a half left, personal no pass PPA. So that would basically mean a personal pet auction. It's like a pet auction house, but just for that person's pets. So pretty much same rules, same kind of thing, but it'll be whatever they set and you're going to want to look at their personal rules. So that's pretty much everything in terms of pet trading events. I'm not going to get into UCs very much here, but I will touch on them because I want you to know in case you possibly get offered a UC or something or you want to offer on one yourself. So that is going to be the last section of this video. All right, UC description flash round. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I'm so scared I'm gonna get like half of this wrong, but you know what? This video isn't about UCs. This is just a little bit of a nugget of information. So I'm gonna do my best. You've probably heard me say UC a few times and wondered what the fuck I was talking about. A UC is an unconverted pet. Neopets used to have an art style very different from now and you couldn't customize pets, you couldn't put clothes on them, backgrounds, whatever. In 2007, this art style was converted into a more uniform, customizable one that drained a lot of the character from the design. You can see here, this is a UC wear loop and this is a converted wear loop. Big difference there. They didn't convert all pets to this style, however, meaning that some still kept that old style, which was a mistake. <laughs> you can convert a pet, but you can't unconvert a pet as of right now, meaning these are very rare and sought after. NCUCs or Neocash UCs are supposedly coming out this December, where you can pay to unconvert your Neo pet, but those are currently not out. Converteds can trade into UCs. Common real words, real names, insane color combinations, etc. will get you a UC sometimes, and like I said, the premium perk, but it's very hard and I've only done it a couple times. And then I traded all of those UCs away for converted, so basically I ended all of my work, but it's fine. It's cool. It's fine. Here are a couple of the amazing UCs that my friend Vi has. They're super neat. They're amazing. Thank you so much for letting me show them off, but that is like over a year of intense trading. They've spent a lot of time working towards those UCs and you're not going to get those instantly. Trust and believe. You cannot list UCs in pet auction houses due to the fact that that would take over the entire pot, but you you can bid them on pets. So if you have a UC, you can bid them on pets in the pot, you just can't list them. If you do want to trade your UC, you're going to have to go to a UC shuffle, which is what I was talking about earlier.
earlier, and that's just basically a pet auction house, a lot of the same rules, but for UCs, it's a whole fucking can of worms. So if you ever get a UC offer, check with some people before you take it, but it might be good, it might be a good idea, and you have a really good pet on your hands usually if somebody offers a UC. So that's about it. That is all the info I'm gonna give on UCs for now due to the fact that I am stupid, and this is also a beginner's trading video, so that's that. I hope this was at all helpful, and I am deeply sorry about how complicated this sounds. I hope that the document helps a little bit. I hope that this was just a good introduction to trading in general. I know almost nothing. I'm not good good at trading, so this is all I could do. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed my incessant rambling, and thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and thank you to all of my members. Stay safe, stay wonderful, my friends. See you next time. Goodbye.